and C38 from your textbook on page 57. In this example, we'll be calculating direct materials used, cost of goods manufactured, and cost of goods sold. In exercise 237, it first asks us what the cost of the direct materials used was in March. We then need to calculate the total manufacturing cost in March and what was the cost of goods sold manufactured in March. We'll be using the text box of information directly above exercise 237. When we're looking for the cost of direct materials used in March, we're going to need to look at how much materials we started with at the beginning of the month, how much in materials were purchased during the month of March, and how many raw materials were still in our inventory at the end of March. So we will start by first putting in how much we had in materials as of March 1st. And in this case, we had $14,000 worth of those raw materials as of March 1st. It tells us that our company purchased materials costing $25,000 during the month of March. We're going to add that to our beginning inventory. That tells us how much materials we had available during the month. It also tells us that on March 31st, we still had $6,500 worth of materials, meaning that these materials were not used in production during the month. Therefore, we need to subtract that amount away from the amount that was available to be used in the month of March. So we'll add our beginning direct materials inventory plus the purchases that we made during the month and we will subtract away the amount that we still have to get the answer for part one of how much we're looking for in direct materials that had been actually used in production during the month. The next part, part two, asks us what was the total manufacturing cost in March? We know that total manufacturing or product cost is calculated by adding together the direct materials used, direct labor, and overhead. We now know from part one how much in direct materials was used in the month of March. They told us in the problem that the company incurred direct labor costs of $10,000 and they had total overhead of 42,000. We add these three components together to get our total manufacturing or product cost for the month of March. In this case, we had $84,500 worth of manufacturing cost that was used in the month of March. In part three, they asked for the cost of goods that were manufactured. When we're asked for the cost of goods that were manufactured, we need to calculate how many goods were 100% completed. We'll start with how much total manufacturing costs we added during the month of March. We also need to look at our work in process or our WIP inventory. They tell us that our work in process as of March 1st was $8,000 and at the end of March it was $4,000 meaning when we opened our doors on March 1st, we had some products that were already partially assembled that had cost us so far $8,000. Our theory then would be that we would complete those products first before starting any others. At the end of March, we have $4,000 worth of work in process inventory, meaning that we started some products spending $4,000 on them, but we haven't yet completed them. They are still, in fact, in process. Therefore, we subtract away our ending work in process. Combined, we get our cost of goods manufactured. We spent $84,500 this month of March, helping to create more goods and completing what we had already started in the previous month. However, some items that we started in March, we were not able to complete. So the total cost to our company to manufacture completed goods in the month of March 
cost $88,500. We're going to use this same information to help us complete exercise 238. They say to refer to the information above, and we need to calculate now what the cost of goods sold were for March. We're going to start with how much, in fact, we had manufactured in March. Remember, goods that are manufactured mean that they are 100% completed and ready to be sold. We also started the month with $9,000 of finished goods inventory. We had $9,000 worth of product that was already 100% completed and ready to be sold. However, at the end of March, we still had some goods that were not sold. We had $7,000 worth. If they're not sold, they cannot be part of cost of goods sold. We do our simple addition and subtraction to figure out what our cost of goods sold was for the month of March. We manufactured 88,500 of completed goods. We also had $9,000 worth of finished goods ready to be sold. And we sold all of those items except for $7,000 worth. Therefore, our cost of goods sold for the month of March is $90,500. That is the amount that we'd see on our income statement for the month of March.